So I'm next going to be interviewing Tony Wright. He owns his own firm, um, and he wants to talk about two things. One is about attribution, and also talk a little bit about online reputation management. So it should be an interesting talk, and looking forward to talking to him. SEMrush is an online visibility, management, and content marketing SaaS platform. Today, it unites over 5 million marketers worldwide and assist them in their everyday with help of its key tools, competitive research, SEO, content marketing, social media, and advertising. SEMrush always aims to provide a product solution to all marketing experts to ease their workflow. Check out their newly launched tool, Content Marketplace. Now you can order an optimized blog post in just a few clicks to fuel your content marketing efforts. Check them out at SEMrush.com and thank you for sponsoring SEMrush. Okay, Tony, thanks for letting me interview you. I appreciate it. Sure. Can you tell people who you are? I mean, people sure. probably know who you are because wow. you've been doing SEO longer than I have been writing about it, but. So. Well, I, I'm Tony Wright. I'm the uh, founder and owner of Wright IMC in uh, the Dallas area, Plano, Texas. Um, I've been doing SEO since around 98. I've done everything from, you know, uh, black hat to now completely white hat. So it's been, it's been a long, strange, but fun journey. So you were telling me when we started, when I was talking to you right before, that you started in 1998 mm -hmm. working for a PR firm. Yes. And the you came right out of college and the job description was something around like cyber PR. Cyber PR is what they called it. Basically, uh, they had a bunch of people that were just doing digital services, everything from email to uh, search engine optimization. And, and they, they hired me because I'd done my graduate thesis on uh, e-commerce sites. That's so. crazy. I mean, it's just so funny that that was the name of what they called SEO before it was really, SEO yeah. wasn't a name back then at all. No, and, and, and oh yeah, it was so funny because I did an American Airlines site and how we were doing SEO was, it was built in this uh, platform that couldn't be crawled. So we had a white, keyword stuffed HTML page with a JavaScript redirect. Uh, Old so fashioned culture? Just to make, yeah, <laughs> just to make, uh, so the search engine could read it. So it's crazy and stuff. You didn't, and you didn't even care about Google back then? No, no, Google wasn't, well, Google wasn't around. What so, was it, Alta yeah. Vista was the big one, Excite? Alta Vista, Excite. Um, of course, the, you know, that was the, the days when people would put billboards up for Yahoo, uh, peep, for the Yahoo directory. You'd go buy a billboard so on the way to yeah. the Yahoo guys commuting in. So. I remember being so excited when I got my Yahoo directory listing for my company. Oh yeah, I'm still grandfathered into the free, although there's no more Yahoo directory. Right. But I never paid for it. So my claim to fame, the Yahoo directory. <laughs> um, so back then, like it was, PR was kind of really tightly tied to SEO. Right. So you getting mentions, links. Not even 98. 98 was nothing about links. It was more about getting as much content out right. there as possible. Yeah, um, it definitely was because it was earned media. That's it was classified. A lot of people classified it as public relations. So. And then in 2007, you decided to start your own firm. Yes. You were just sick and tired of working for the big man. Right. And, and it was, you know, honestly, I was, I wanted to do. I was doing so much at Weber and I wanted to do search, kind of more concentrated on search because that's what I'd fallen in love with and and uh, the, the timing was right and started out in my garage and now, you know, we've grown, at, we've got 15 folks now and I honestly don't want to get a whole lot bigger, but uh, yeah, I hear you. I, we were and it was too much to manage, but uh, but we do, you know, we've, we've been doing really great work and I'm really proud of our team. That's awesome. Congratulations on the success. So I know you wanted to talk a little bit about attribution. Yes. And can you tell us a little about why you want to talk about that? I think it's so important for everyone to understand uh, how things work together. I mean, obviously, you know, people are still looking at things in a last click mentality in a lot of cases. So it's like, okay, uh, organic search drove $15,000 of sales last month. Well, that's not, probably not the whole picture. Uh, in, in most cases, there were multiple touch points. And especially as SEOs, a lot of times people, we're undervaluing our work because uh, we're hitting the, the consumer at the top of the funnel in the information gathering stage and understanding, you know, Google Analytics gives us a lot of tools now to, to check. In fact, they just came out with a new attribution uh, dashboard uh, that's now available. It was just available to the premium analytics users, and now it's available to everyone. And it, it's really pretty simple to use. You set up an attribution project, and you can see, for the most part, the touch points uh, to a sale. So. And that's it's important for you and for your and your customers, I guess, to know where those clicks are coming from in order to say, all right, this is maybe not what led to the sale, but this is part of the path. So investing in this media or this medium is very important. You should keep investing or not invest in these areas right. because of that purpose. Right, and I, I, I always tell this story. Uh, years ago, if you remember Gateway Computers. Yeah. Gateway Computers was my client, and we were doing really well on the paid search and some other stuff. 
did so well, in fact, that they decided to give us uh, all of the TV and print budget um, for digital, which made sense to them. Yeah. And I did a happy dance, I, you know. But what we saw is that six months in, search volume just dropped because the television and radio were right. actually contributing to those searches. So uh, I've, and so ever since then, I've really wanted to know what are my touch, what are the overall touch points and how is everything kind of working in that mix. Right. And that's how you get more marketing dollars for yourself. Exactly. Which is great. Awesome. Let's move on to reputation management. Sure. So why did you get into that space? Well, I fell into that. Back when I was at Weber Shanwick, um, American Airlines was my client and I ended up doing all of the, uh, I did all the crisis management for American during 9-11, uh, right. including, and then also right after that, if you remember, there was a, a, a another crash, it was a bird strike in Rockaway. Yeah. And uh, I did all, so I, I've done, and, and because of that, I got into crisis and got a name for myself. But of course, being an SEO, you know, I of course went to go looking at, at when people come to me when they've got something negative showing up in Google. Okay. and. It's an interesting play. Is that easier, rep online reputation management, specifically with Google, um, than doing normal SEO? No, actually, it's, it it's, can be a lot harder because a lot of times you're having to uh, try and do some optimization for sites that you don't have control over, like pushing links or something like that. The, the best way to do it is actually it, when a company can be proactive. Right. If you're telling your story, um, putting content out there about you that's positive, that's the way to, best way to go because Frankly, when if there's a blank slate and there's not anything out you and a crisis hits, that crisis is going to win every time. Right. That's interesting. Any big stories like that really maybe like you're proud of or in the reputation management space that you took care of? Oh well, there was one. It was a, actually it was in, in Manhattan. This uh, plastic surgeon that we worked with. Um, he had had some. Uh, this lady I saw. And you know, there's HIPAA issues when you're dealing with that. But lady was not happy with her nose job. I saw it. It was actually really good. But this review kept coming up, and um, we couldn't get it. It was on a really highly trafficked site. We couldn't get it pushed down. So what I did was I actually found somebody there and contacted them and talked to them about this review and you know gave the doctors references. And what they said is, we'll take it down if your doctor will do two hours of video content on his procedures. Of course, which I would have done anyways. Wow. But they, they, it's funny. You know, so sometimes it's not even about just the, the SEO side, yeah. it's about the you know, people hacking. It's funny, there was this major, I don't want to say too much, but a customer of mine is a pretty big brand in the US, and they had a website that basically was their name, do not buy from them. And it ranked number two for wow. back in the old days, like in, oh, the, yeah, yeah. in like the I don't know, early 2000s. I'm like, why don't you just call the person and give them a free, your product, or two of them, and just let it go. Like, no, we won't do that, we refuse. I can't tell you how much business that customer lost, probably because of that number two listing that says do not buy from their brand. So I, I just don't get it. Why don't people just reach out to the person who has the complaint, mm -hmm. the person who owns the website, or whatever the problem is? That's one is. of the first things I do. I just actually had another one recently where it was a, a seven-year-old article started showing up. I just called the, 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 the publication and said, look, would you mind just putting this little piece of code on there, you know, just a no, no index for this page? They said, sure, they didn't mind. They did it. Wow. You know? That's so interesting. Anybody you, you won't take on for reputation management issues? I'm sure you get certain phone calls that you're yeah, like, uh, I don't want to touch we, We've had some that I have not taken on. Anybody that's doing something, uh, that's had, you know, anything to do with children or right. uh, pedophiles or anything, obviously. I don't really do any porn stuff. We had some, we had one that was a prostitute review site that wanted some help and I said no. Mm -hmm. So obviously things like that I don't take on. Um, but. You know, somebody, if I believe that it's kind of like a lawyer, everybody has, uh, people need to be able to tell their side of the story. Right. And even if they've done something wrong, sometimes they need to be able to, uh, you know, ask for forgiveness. Cool. All right. So your number one tip for ORM is basically reach out to the person who has a complaint. And that's a great tip. Yes. And what if they don't, they refuse? What do you do then? Then it's about. Well, then it's, then it's go, you know, you're, you're, you've lost nothing except for the time that it took you to reach out to them. Because okay. You're going to have to do that, you know, then. It's and it's about a grind. Pushing up those yes. positive sites. It's, you've got 10 pieces of real estate on that page and you want to control as many of them as you can. Cool. Awesome. I appreciate you doing this. How sure. can people learn more about you and find you? Sure. Uh, you can visit my website at uh, www.rightimc.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Tony N. Wright. And um, I'm, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, everywhere else. You just type in Tony Wright Search. I'm pretty easy to find. I also write a monthly column for a search engine journal. Love you to read that. Cool. And you'll never find any bad things about this guy. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Th thanks, Barry.